let's start a conversation about electricity tariff, the hike. Uh, almost 300% for band A users, now 225 uh, uh, kilowatt and all of the details we're going to find out on the show today. What does this mean? They have about a few bands, A, B, C, D, and E. Some people are adding F, there's no band F. So that depends on the number of hours. But people are struggling to find out exactly what band they belong to because some of them, they don't have enough parts they wouldn't know exactly what band they belong to. All of that conversation is what we want to have right now on the program. We've been joined in the program by member Nigeria Society of Engineers, the MD and CEO of CCS Technology Limited, uh, Engineer Ato Usiago, who joins us via Zoom. Engineer Usiago, thank you so much for coming on the program. Thank you so much for coming on the program. Can you hear me, sir? Okay, I guess we'll try to uh, okay, resolve the connection uh, with him. But it's important to have this conversation. Just to be sure, uh, can you hear us, engineer? Yes. Oh, I can hear you. Great. Right. Good morning. Uh, welcome to the show. Uh, we have an engineer, Otho Osiago, who's a member of Nigeria Society of Engineers, MDC or CCS Technology Limited. I, I don't know if you were shocked about this. For some industry players, you had seen this coming. In fact, some had advocated for this, saying, let people who want more power pay more for this. But there's still uh, that elephant in the room. One is just how much people are getting 20 plus hours uh, of power supply. How consistent is it? Would they be downgraded if they don't get as much? For the other people who are not on any band whatsoever, because some people are saying they are not on any band, they are on band Z, what will be their fate? But let's get your immediate reactions uh, to this recent tariff hike. They will walk through those questions. Yeah, thank you very much. Uh, I am not surprised that um, we have uh, an increment in what we are paying for electricity in the country uh, uh, today. Uh, well, we've been on this for quite uh, a long time. If, if you if you look at the electricity subsector, you um, agree with me that uh, it's been difficult to have a serious investment flow into that subsector. So it has always been government bringing in money, you know, to uh, kind of run the sector. And if for those who have been following my argument over the years. I am one of those who has been saying that uh, uh, doing business is not really government uh, business. You know, the government, the only thing they need to do is uh, regulatory. Uh, and this is some sector has suffered over so many years. And for us to, you know, just start the industry properly, we need serious funding. And you cannot fund the electricity subsector uh, while you are also subsidizing you know, uh, electricity. Currently, government is spending over $2.3 billion uh, in terms of cap subsidy for electricity. With that, there is no way you can have a, a, a massive investment flow into that subsector. So I'm not surprised that this is coming uh, at this time, but um, I have some reservations the way uh, it's being deployed. You know, if you look at this increment that is over 200 percent, and they, they are capping it on uh, uh, the the band A, uh, the, the the band arrangement for this uh, cost reflective tariff is is not homogeneous. You know what I mean is that you, you, you know how our country is. You cannot actually say that a particular section is only on that band A. We have some other communities aligned with those people who the discos are considered as part A, and all of them are not equally adapted. So what you find uh, is not all the affluent society you have in uh, Aja, for example. There are still some communities that are also within that catchment that are attached to that feeder that are not really uh, people you can say they have the capacity to pay that kind of uh, 240 percent increment in terms of rent. So it's not homogeneous. The poor who are attached to that band will also have a, a way to suffer from uh, these uh, increments. So that is 
the dislocation in the in the arrangement for now. Uh, I, I know there are explainers to so some of the things that you said, and um, the NEC has also mentioned some of the things you, meant, you, you, you listed. Uh, but the concern that people are having is the timing. This, uh, two things, the timing, second, the rate of increment. I want you to speak to that. Yes, um, the, the, the timing, I will agree with you that the timing is not uh, correct. Because uh, if you look at what is happening in the country currently, uh, the majority of the citizens are going through very, very harsh economic uh, realities, occasioned by a massive increase in the cost of uh, petrol, uh, diesel, and so many other basic uh, uh, food items. So one would have expected that the government would look at this uh, probably and look for the best time frame to make this increment. But also, the level of increment is uh, quite astronomical. Uh, from uh, 60 to 68 uh, naira per kilowatt hour, uh, taking it up to about 240 naira per kilowatt hour, which is, uh, uh, I mean, 235 per kilowatt hour, which is almost 240% uh, increment. That uh, a little bit is, uh, is sensitive at this time. So I agree with you completely. We've talked about the sensitivity. I mean, uh, Jeffrey just asked our question, but you'd also want to ask, were people consulted? Do we... Is this how things, I mean, just decisions are just taken? I mean, I thought stakeholders are to be consulted. People who are directly affected should be asked questions, increasing from 68 Naira to 225 Naira. How do you want people to cope with that amount? Uh, well, we have these uh, numbers say that uh, the customer is king. Uh, but the way it is now, you you agree with me that what has happened now, the customer is actually not the king uh, in this system. But I have always advocated that uh, the government shouldn't be getting involved in this. You know, government shouldn't get involved in this. Um, we, we, if we need to fly, if we need to move to where we should be, I, I have said it several that government should answer completely. Allow industry players to get involved wholly in the area of electricity. Because if you, there are still lots of dislocations in this, in this approach, and at the end of the day, even the, even the 20 hours we are talking about, how is it possible? How is it possible for, for us to have 20 hours supply? When, when the grid is still combatants, you, are, you can agree with me that uh, uh, recently, we, in this year, you know, we had a close to three system collapse, you know, in this country. So the grid is weak. So how are you still going to wield power to ensure that both the industrial sector and those who, who need electricity for, I mean, for homes, they, 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 they are able to enjoy 20 hours of electricity uninterrupted? It's still a very tough order because the infra, the electricity infrastructure is still a problem as we speak today. So it's like running around the same circle. We've tried so many ways, and yet we're still in the same part of Maya. So it's, it's still a big problem. So I don't see how, uh, with government involvement, even if we take tariff to to uh, 250% equipment, it's not going to solve the problem because government still has a hand in this whole energy subsector, which is not going to help us as a country. It is the, the, so huge that government has no capacity to fund and government has no uh, uh, will with that to run this subsidy. That is just the this, this, this situation why. So I want us to begin to project now into the future, which is now actually. I recall when subsidy was removed, petrol subsidy that is, there was first gladness, then groaning. And that groaning still lasting up until today, perhaps tomorrow, except some major uh, turnarounds are done.
A lot of people said that was a way forward, but they said government didn't quite plan for the eventualities that came with subsidy removal, and we know what that has done to a lot of things. So for this subsidy removal for electricity for Band A, let's sort of project uh, the effect it will have on the economy. For those who are manufacturing, some of them may just be on Band A. If we're seeing a 300% increase in their electricity costs, what will that do to the price of goods in the market? And I'm talking FMCGs. Even farmers, for example, too, in terms of storage and the rest. So can you give us an insight into what this may do to the economy so we're better prepared? Yeah, it's true. It's true that uh, this increment, uh, we allow industry players to invest more in the electricity subsector because uh, when... At the former rate, when it was heavily subsidized by government, it became so difficult for industry players to finance this sector. So what will happen with this increment is going to attract a massive inflow you know, of uh, uh, serious financing into that sector. That's one. Uh, because if you if you look at, if you have to generate a electricity on your own, a liter of diesel, for example, will give you between uh, three to four kilowatt hour of electricity, which means per kilowatt hour of electricity, if you are doing self generation, you will be spending close to 400 to 500 naira per kilowatt hour. So, this increment uh, actually we allow massive inflow of those who really want to, uh, you know, uh, invest in the electricity subsector. But it is going to really dig a lot of holes in the pockets of uh, subscribers because they were not carried along, you know, fully. And this time around, in my own opinion, uh, shouldn't be uh, the, the actual timing they should take effect. Government should have at least some back a little bit and look at the appropriate time when the economy has fully jump-started in view of where we are coming from before we, we you know, look at this uh, massive idea of over 200 and 40% uh, increment in terms of the time. Doesn't this sound like a customers paying for some form of systemic failure? That's what it sounds like. Maybe you correct me if I'm wrong. That's on one hand. On the other hand, on the other hand we're talking about investors coming in. Uh, are there sufficient infrastructure in the first place to even support this investment coming in to be able to revamp the sector and get us as much power as we want? Well, it's true that uh, over the years, uh, government has spent uh, more than $20 billion in the electricity subsector. But of course, you know, uh, massive leakages when it comes to government involvement in business needs and uh, massive time lag and poor decision making, you know. So that is why we have been advocating that uh, it's right time government helps off completely. Because if, if you allow the private sector to drive this initiative, you agree with me that the, 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 the value chain, what we are having now in the last 20 years, would have been far, far more than uh, what we are experiencing now. The electricity supply in Nigeria is still a problem because of lots of challenges between that subsector. It's not far fetched for one to take that. It is the involvement of government. Government is not capable to drive this uh, subsector in terms of massive capital outlay involved. So that is why we have been saying they need to uh, get off the space, you know, to sell the remaining equity they are holding in this, which is about uh, 40%, and then, uh, you know, completely, completely privatize the transmission company of Nigeria, which today still remains the weakest link. So no matter what we do with electricity, uh, in terms of government involvement, it's not going to be an Eldorado for us. Uh, the, the third thing is for government to fully decentralize the, the grid system. You know, I've said this so many times. Uh, the 17% the, the or 15% of the, of the A band they are talking about, you know, takes about 50% of, of the total electricity quantum that this country is using. So decentralize the grid system, you know, uh, plan a new grid system for the Bandwan team so that 60% of the quantum of electricity that is needed in Nigeria will be sorted. Then the remaining can still be kept in the grid. 
So when we, and the government does not have the funding to do all this, if, if this is not done, we will still be running around the same side. Mr. Siago, you've said 50% of the electricity grid in the country belongs to the band A, which means the band A, they're enjoying this light for how many hours? They said 20 hours. That is if they give up to 20 hours. Are there plans for those in, from band B down to band Z? What do you think will be the solution to the problem for people who do not even see this power in their areas? That, that, that is why I am, I am fighting this uh, initiative for now, because uh, electricity supply in Nigeria is not uh, totally homogeneous. You know that our communities are not planned. You cannot say this is the exclusive area for the rich or uh, industry. We don't have complete catchment arrangement for electricity supply. So you have a rich uh, uh, area, but you still have some poor enclaves, you know, attached to that feeder. So it is difficult for you to totally do a discrimination to say this feeder only serves uh, the industrial area or there are still homes within the industrial area. i give you a few examples. If you look at the urban industrial area, the feeder feeding that catchment also has a way of feeding some sections of aggregate. So if the urban industrial catchment is uh, uh, put uh, along the part A. So a section of it is still feeding Agege. So the, the poor people in Agege will also be paid to pay, you know, these uh, uh, high rates in terms of uh, what you have now. So it's not homogeneous. It's going to create a problem. So that's why I'm advocating that the best way is to allow private initiative to handle the electricity problems in Nigeria. And in the next two, three years, you see a massive capitalization in this sector, and the problem of electricity will be resolved. But if government keeps playing a major role in the planning, in generation, in distribution, and uh, in transmission, it is going to still be a ding dong affair, a ding dong affair that we've been in in the last uh, 30, 40 years. So there won't be good in road. So government must fight the, you know, uh, the, the king will probably and get off these uh, subsector and allow private sector to drive their time. Right. You can see what happened recently in our back. So that is the way to go. No, while these sectors are quite peculiar, what is uh, how the banking sector operates is different from the power sector. You know, the power sector is big on infrastructure, physical infrastructure. Uh, you know what vandalism has done, people trying to bypass meters, and of course the power company is not delivering as they ought to. But there's this question that is sticking out really. So Bande customers are said to be, what, 17% of the total customers, at least that's what NERC said. They're meant to get 20 plus powers, uh, sorry, power supply. And that is meant to be an agreement between them and the distribution company. So the distribution companies can get more remit to the Jenkos and then we shall have more power. But what happens on days that you don't get up to 20 hour supply? What do you think should happen? Because it's an agreement. So if the distribution companies or the whole power supply chain, if they renege on their own part of the deal, would it still be fair for the consumer to pay that 220 something naira tariff for that day they don't get up to 20 hours of power yeah i tell you you are right the, the, the only workable way is that um, all those who are going to be on this bank yes. must be metered properly because you you can only pay what you utilize if you are not metered and you are part a it's going to be a, a catastrophe. But if you are meters and you are part A, yes, you can only pay based on the power you receive. But if, if you look at the entire supply chain architecture of electricity, it's a bit funny. Now, are you, you are aware that uh, NERC regulates, but you have another in between uh, the government uh, establishment, which is the embed that buys this power from uh, the, the, the Jenkos 
assigned to the discourse. You and I have been witnesses to what has happened in the last three years, where there will be power availability, but the, the, the discourse will refuse to buy. They will refuse to buy because they, they don't want to take the quantum of electricity that is available. They only want to take the one they know they can sell to those who are willing to buy and are willing to pay. So these are these are dislocation along along the downstream electricity subsector, which I have said is it, not right. And that is the reason why I've been advocating that government must answer completely because I don't see why the MBED is playing a middleman role in this arrangement. Allow those who generate electricity, allow them to transmit the power, allow them to sell the power. So they have a holistic, a total package arrangement that will give us power. You know, you, you cannot also be keeping 40% equity in the discourse. And every day, you, you give them subtle threat. Oh, we are going to revoke the license. The next day, oh, we'll do this, we'll do that. When this kind of, um, it, 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 you know, ideas come from government, it makes it so difficult for the discourse to go full plug, look for money, recapitalize, and run the entity the way they want to run. Look at all the discourse along uh, in the downstream electric, electrical uh, subset. You discover that there has not been any massive improvement in the infrastructure. Because they just run it like a, a daily business. They are not really interested in uh, you know making massive investment to improve the infrastructure. So there are lots of losses along the line. They don't really care. Massive electricity theft. So they need to apply technology in in in, in, the, in, the, in the best way available to you know monitor electricity along the subsector. But these things are not happening. Because the discourse are they're very, very skeptical about the next move of government. They don't know. So this, this government um, involvement in electricity is really drawing us back at situation. And yeah. it's not going to allow us to see the light at the end of the tunnel if we continue with this trajectory. You know, energy is... Uh one of the key factors uh, when it comes to inflation, when you talk about transportation and energy, it, it, it's quite critical. So when you, because when you look at the government in power, I think it's supposed to be a centrist rights government, left government rather, so populist, socialist, but we're seeing a lot of um, cap capitalism in this in the system, which is what you're also advocating for uh, at the end of the day, for private sector people to come in and be players. So if we're looking at the future of private sector taking over entirely, help us uh, understand how they will do things differently in terms of population distribution. You have talked about feeders feeding uh, the well-off as well as the not-too-well-off. There are situations where the well-off is living as among the not-too-well-off. So it's a mixed bag of population distribution. What would they do differently since they are profit-driven to help everybody kind of afford these things at the end of the day? Yes, that, that is the that is the electricity is electricity everywhere. The, it costs it costs about uh, 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 one million US dollars for you to generate about uh, uh, one megawatt of electricity. It's quite a lot. So you 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 anybody who wants electricity will definitely one way or another pay for it. The well off and the not so well off as it is in this country today. All of us are already generating electricity ourselves. We are using generators. Those who cannot afford diesel, they are, already, they are using petrol to run their small generators. And if you do a little calculation, you discover that everybody in this country, whether well off or no well off consumer, we are, we are spending close to 300 to 450 naira generating per kilowatt hour of electricity. So my view is that uh, this uh, discrimination should put me there. I'm telling you that Nigeria, Nigeria is a very good country. We, we are ready and we are willing to pay for electricity if we have it. So allow, let electricity be enough. People, even if they are going to pay more for electricity, with the preponderance of electricity are all within the nooks and crannies of Nigeria, there will be massive wealth generation because without electricity, there is no economy. So that is what I believe this government should do. 
They should take the bull by the horn, you know, get off the space and uh, get in massive uh, finance into this subsector. Sell the remaining uh, equity they have with the discos completely, 100%, not even 40%. You know, privatize completely the transmission company of Nigeria, which as of today still remain the weakest link and cannot win as we speak. More than 3,000 megawatts of electricity. So how are we going to develop? How are we going to ensure that we, we, we provide electricity for the teaming citizens of Nigeria? If we don't do that, that we'll keep subsidizing electricity and we, the way we are subsidizing, we are losing money, 2.3 billion dollars on subsidy. <laughs> No country is going to survive with that. Nigerians are already suffering. They are already generating electricity on their own. They are already spending over 400 naira per kilowatt hour of electricity via gener uh, uh, generators. Yeah. And this is already averaging even the industrial sector. Go to our companies now. They run on diesel. And you know how expensive diesel is now. So the, 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 the issue is that government cannot solve this problem. They just have to back out, just like what happened in the telecommunications subsector. I said, right. we'll keep on running around this circle if we, if, if, if we allow government to keep meddling in this electricity subsector. They need to take a bow and allow this system to work with private companies coming in to run this electricity subsector. That is the only, it may be expensive at the beginning, but at the long run, We'll have two or three players coming into the system. Right. You will see, well, based on the uh, competition, the actual quantum of what we pay in terms of electricity within the next one year or two will go down. It will definitely go down. But government will have to take the bull by the horn. And the time to do it is now. Because uh, it will be a travesty, really, a travesty of justice if. Uh, for the Bande people that are now paying over 200, they paid, and they still don't get that amount of power daily. By the way, uh, can they sue? Should they sue just in case that happens? Because, I mean, it's a deal. Everybody signed that contract of sorts. You said that they are paying 400 naira uh, per kilowatt hour to generate power using, uh, you know, generating sets and the rest. So I imagine if Companies adjust to this, they start paying the plus 200. But if they're not getting up to uh, 20 hours, they are still spending 400 naira per kilowatt hour to you know, service their generator. So at the end of the day, they end up paying more than they used to pay when they didn't have good supply and the tariff was less than what they're paying. Uh, they, they end up paying more now than what they used to pay then. It's a very tricky one, but I imagine you understand what I'm trying to say. So. Is this also an opening for people to begin to challenge the distribution companies, the whole power supply uh, generation and all of that value chain, to challenge them in court? We, they used to do that before, but is this now an opening to say, well, if you renege on that contract, I can go to court? No, 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 it's not. There's no way you can go to court with uh, governments in corporate. But, but it's, it's a like contract. I'm saying yeah, now, it's a, it's a well, contract. There are laws of contracts that uh, you, uh, you sign with government. And, uh, I'm talking about within Nigeria. And most times you discover that uh, they, they don't keep the other end of their bargain. The, the truth is that private sector can give you 98% power availability. <laughs> and uh, if there's going to be a hitch in terms of supply, they notify you. We had this long time ago in this country when we were much younger. It's still possible. Uh, but if it is government, it's difficult. The, I, I can assure you they won't keep to that end of the, of the contract. Because the, the discos, as it is today, cannot guarantee you 20 hours of electricity because it's not totally in their hands. Generation is not in their hands. Transmission is not in the hands of the discos. Because the transmission is in the hands of uh, uh, the, the transmission company of Nigeria which is wholly owned by government, 100%. So if there's a transmission failure or a grid collapse that is not caused by the discourse, so how are you 
How are you as a customer of the discos? What are you going to do? So these are lots of distributions in the downstream electricity subsector that I'm talking about. So it's not totally in the hands of the discos. So if you allow a, a unitary system, you know, the, a company that is generating its own electricity is transmitting it and is also distributing it, then you can hold them accountable if there's any supply failure. But on one hand, you have an entity that is supposedly a private entity that is supplying you power, you had an agreement with them. On the other hand, that same entity that is supplying you power, the, the grid that is providing the supply to that entity, they don't have control over it. It's owned by government. With all the inefficiencies in government. And, uh, you know, so it's going to be difficult, no matter the agreement they sign. I can assure you, there's no way they can control it. If they tell you 20 hours, if you have the 20 hours, oh, you are lucky. But there are lots of issues that are not within the control of this, that have been issued find the contract to. So it's not going to work Mrs. until Mrs. there is a complete uh, 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 removal, you know, from the angle of government in this uh, electric supply chain. You know what you so said, you what you said may be true, but, <clears throat> excuse me, it's almost very sad to listen to uh, this part of that conversation, given the fact that when the government wants to tax us, uh, they go as far as they can get to get money out of our pocket because it's our civic responsibility to pay taxes. And now when we want them to take responsibility for failure, uh, from what you're saying, it appears that it's a tall order. It's quite unfortunate. But at the end of the day, Nigerians want better service, efficient service. So whether it's the government involved or the private sector, all Nigerians want a service. I don't think the average Nigerian and discerning Nigerian has a problem with paying bills. We must thank you. Uh, Engineer Arthur Osuago for coming on the program, member Nigerian Society of Engineers and MDC of CCS Technology Limited. Thank you for coming on the program, sir. Thank you for having me. It's been nice being with you. And we'll take a quick break now. When we come back, we'll switch gears to that lady who is uh, breaking barriers as uh, a marina. What that conversation is all about is what we'll bring to you after this break. Join us again.